Bundesliga 2 is turning 50. It's long been more than just the Bundesliga younger sibling. Over the last five decades, it's made history in its own right. Germany's second division has been a launching pad for many future stars. Football as it's meant to be, with plenty of tradition. Bundesliga 2 has long since established itself in its own right, and it's truly booming. Calls for a second division gathered pace not long after the establishment of the Bundesliga, but it still took 10 years until the two division Bundesliga 2 came into being, seeing 20 teams competing in the northern section and 20 in the south. Among the big names to feature in the opening seasons were Borussia Dortmund and Wolfsburg in the north and former champions Nürnberg and 1860 München in the south. Many other founding members, on the other hand, are less well known today. Wieder nur knapp 2000 Zuschauer am roten Baum, viel Platz also auf den Tribünen. Even the most devout followers of German football might not recognize names such as Bamberg Uhlenhorst or Röchling Völklingen. A crowd of 13,000 came to watch the opening fixture on 2nd August 1974. A sign that Bundesliga 2 could attract fans who didn't just witness a 1-0 win for Saarbrücken against Darmstadt, but also a 21-year-old midfielder called Felix Magard. Magard, ein klasse Mittelfeldspieler, Motor der Saarbrücker Mannschaft. Magard would go on to win six Bundesliga titles as a player and a coach, plus a European Cup. Spectators that day saw a legend in the making. And Margaret is far from the only household name to have taken his first steps in Bundesliga 2. The first decade of its existence saw a certain Horst Rubesch smash 41 goals for Rot Weiss Essen in the 1977 78 campaign. To this day, still the single season record in Bundesliga 2. Ich finde es ganz gut, dass wir den I think it's good we got Rubesch in this season because it means we no longer are so helpless with high balls up front. He can definitely help with his physicality. We guess you could say that. Rudi Feller was also a big help to his first two clubs, Kickers Offenbach and 1860 München. He enjoyed his best season with the latter, finishing his top scorer in 1981-82 with 37 goals. Rudi Feller with geschicklichkeit. 1-0 Führung. Ottmar Hitzfeld is best known for his remarkable record as a coach, twice winning the Champions League and lifting the Bundesliga seven times. But what's less well known is his 22-goal contribution in VfB Stuttgart's so-called 100-goal attack. From the 1976-77 season. Hitzfeld, diesmal aus dem Hinterhalt. He got six of those 22 in an 8-0 thrashing of Regensburg. Ottmar Hitzfeld, 8-0, sein sechster Treffer in diesem Spiel, das 100. Tor des VfB in dieser Saison. It's a feat no other player has managed in German professional football. Not even a certain Jürgen Klinsmann, who began his career in Bundesliga 2 with Stuttgarter Kickers. Klinsmann, a 19 year old, a riesen talent. Even back then, he was famous for his celebrations. One of the division's youngest players was Schalke legend Olaf Thun. Olaf Thun, a 17 year old young Stepke. And as a Schalke boy through and through, he knows that the division is secondary to his love for the club. This man is also a now instantly recognizable face from Bundesliga 2. Joachim Löw played 252 times at this level for Freiburg, scoring 81 goals. I always used to play in midfield, more of a number 10 behind the striker. I was more of a dribbler, would try to dribble with the ball a lot and like to get into the box from midfield. It was always fascinating for me to score goals and create chances for others. It was in Bundesliga 2 that the later World Cup winning coach owned his understanding for the game. There were records galore in the first decade. One of the strangers was claimed by this one-time chimney suite. 
the iconic Walter Frosch was regarded as a walking yellow card. A lot of opponents and spectators say that I'm a kicker, but if you know anything about football, you'll realize I'm not a kicker. At least the rumor that Frosch once received 27 yellow cards in a season has since been refuted by research. It was probably more like 18 in 1976-77, which was enough for Frosch to be considered the reason why the German FA introduced suspensions for accumulation of yellow cards. So you might think Frosch used to carry yellow cards in his socks, but they were actually filled with something else. Was haben Sie da unten in Ihrem Stutzen drin? Sie halten. One of Bundesliga Second's most unwanted records belongs to Pomazans, who won just once in 1977-78. This compares to 33 defeats and 120 goals conceded. Perhaps Pomazans got off lightly. They missed out on the Dieter Schatzschneider era. If they had, things might have turned out even worse. Schatzschneider scored a total of 153 goals for Hannover and Fortuna Köln, securing him the title of record goalscorer in Bundesliga 2 for a very long time. That was until this man arrived. Simon Terodde! Terodde surpassed Chad Schneider's record in 2021-2022 and extended it to 177. He was the division's season top scorer four times for four different clubs in Bochum, Stuttgart, Köln and finally Schalke. It's no surprise you might lose your voice celebrating all these goals. <coughs> Before losing his voice completely, Terodde announced his retirement in 2024. Bundesliga 2 has always been home to some unique characters. Two of them emerged in the mid-80s in Ansgar Brinkmann and Willy Landgraf. They embodied the football of that era. Real fighters on the pitch with a clear stance of it. Brinkmann was something of a footballing nomad. He moved clubs 18 times over 20 years, played 315 games in Bundesliga 2. The white Brazilian, as he was called by fans and the media, was a man of clear words. Someone who refused to yield, and yet, or perhaps precisely because of that, the fans liked him. Landgraf was another Bundesliga 2 original. Or let's call him Mr. Bundesliga 2. He was a small defender at just 1 meter 66 tall, but his reputation was always great. His 508 second division appearances for Rot-Weiß Essen, Homburg, Gütersloh and finally Alemannia Aachen made him a legend. He finally managed to gain promotion to the Bundesliga with Aachen. The fact that he retired immediately afterwards could hardly have been more fitting. The beginning of the 1990s was a special time and not just for football in Germany. The country's reunification brought together what belonged together. It also meant changes for Bundesliga 2, which was expanded to create a very big league. A total of 24 teams competed in a mammoth 1992-93 season. After 46 rounds of fixtures, seven teams were relegated. Five more went down the year after, reducing the division back to its 18-team format that we still have today. Part of the Bundesliga 2 story at that time was Mainz, with a player you might just recognize. Mainz really needs something. 3-1 down. Oh, make it 3-2! It's in the back of the net! Jürgen Klopp has scored! Klopp himself probably never would have believed at the time what a coaching career lay ahead of him. During his playing days, he limited himself to fighting. 
by any means necessary. And then, as a coach, he achieved what he had been denied as a player. After three dramatic failed attempts, Mainz were promoted to the Bundesliga. And sometimes, Bundesliga 2 also came up with stories that nobody would believe if there weren't pictures to prove it. In December 1999, Fortuna Köln president Jean Löring sacked head coach Tony Schumacher during the halftime. I've put it off for so long, simply to avoid hurting a great sportsman. But I can't stand by and watch my club be run into the ground. Since the assistant coach didn't return the dugout out of solidarity with Schumacher, Löring took over the coaching himself to no avail. Fortuna lost 5-1 to to Waldhof Mannheim. <laughs> Nobody has a shred of confidence. Typical Cologne. Things are often different in Germany's carnival capital, where one player embodies the city like few others. Lukas Podolski. Now the city's most famous son, in 2004, he was Köln's greatest hope. His 24 goals sent the city wild and the team back into the Bundesliga. Podolski, just 19 years old at the time, captivated Bundesliga 2 with his carefree manner. More future Germany players also had the honor of featuring in Bundesliga 2 during the 2000s. Kevin Großkreuz playing with Marco Reus, for example, although not yet at Dortmund, but actually for Rot-Weiss Aden. Or Ilkay Gündogan, who made his debut there for Nürnberg. Leon Goretzka and Christoph Kramer also started out at this level. Mark Flecken also has a place in history. Back in his Duisburg days, the goalkeeper was at the center of one of the most bizarre goals. With his drink break against Ingolstadt, coming at an, an unfortunate time. A gift for Ingolstadt, but luckily for Flecken, his Duisburg side still won the game by 2-1. And if you think a goal like that can't be beaten, then you haven't seen this one from Daniel Hoyer Fernandes. Of all times for a howler, a Hamburg goalkeeper produced this one in the derby against St. Pauli. There's a particular special atmosphere when former Bundesliga ever presents HSV, meet Kalt Club and city rivals Pauli. And goals are guaranteed. Some brilliant, some certainly affordable. Bundesliga 2 continues to create its own stories in the modern era. And in front of more and more spectators, an average of 30,000 attended games in 2023-24. The second division has rarely been so attractive, also boasting some huge clubs. The anniversary season promises to break records once again, with more big clubs such as Köln joining the fold, the league's appeal is assured, and we're ready for yet more moments of history.